I'd like to actually kind of segue to that to Karen because you're because <coughs> you're a medical professional on the on the panel, and um, what do you see as some of the most important health um, issues for lesbians and um, same-sex attracted women to be aware of? Not only just around drug and alcohol use, but outside of that. Well, I think first and foremost we're women. And uh, I think we have all of the health risks of uh, any woman of any sexual orientation or any identity. And so I think f first and foremost, we need to look at the public health messages for women in general and say, well, I'm a woman and that message is meant for me. Uh, I have to go and have pap smears, I need to think about mammograms, I need to talk to my doctor if I'm having issues with uh, drugs and alcohol, I need to get help, I need to talk to somebody if I'm having emotional problems. And, and really, I mean, I, I think although, I, I think one of the most important things you can do is to have a GP who gets you, who's on your wavelength, they don't have to be gay or lesbian, but it, uh, it, they need to be gay competent. Gay friendly is not even good enough. They actually have to be gay competent. So they have to really understand you and where you're coming from. And you have to feel entirely comfortable talking about anything about your life and yourself. Uh, for you, yourself, your children, your partner, you know, anything about your life. So I think, you know, I, I, I guess I'm talking about non-discriminatory health care and finding it. Uh, I know that that can be a challenge, uh, but I think it's important that uh, that you are open with any doctors that you see about who you are and about your lifestyle, and that if you need help, you ask for it. And I think we're getting back to the theme of the panel, which is resilience. I think emotional and physical health are really important parts of resilience, because if you're feeling disconnected with yourself, if you're feeling disconnected with uh, who you really are, if you're feeling unwell, then you can't be as resilient as, as if you're feeling physically and emotionally strong. And obviously there's a chicken and egg situation. I like to think uh, in medical terms of resilience as a retrospective diagnosis. You don't know you're resilient till you've been through it all and come out the other end and say, I survived. Now, there are some of you in this room who will be going through really tough times right now. You'll have been through really tough times in the past and come through it. But for anyone who's going through a tough time, and if you've got any friends who are going through a tough time right now, the, the message for them and the message in campaigns in the US is that it gets better. Yeah. Uh, and part of resilience is having a belief that things will get better if you're going through a really difficult time and to pull together resources that you can. Part of that's emotional and physical health and well-being, doing what you can to live as naturally and as well as you can, to ask for help to check up uh, any health issues that you have. And, uh, and, and ultimately, when you've come through difficult times, uh, to say, I survived and I am therefore resilient. Thank you.